What would you think of a streamer that costs you 169 euros plus the price of a good power supply, that offers you an SPDIF output on RCA and BNC and works with files up to 24 bit 192 kilohertz and even does DOP? You could have waited for it. After reviewing the Haifa Berry Digi Plus for Raspberry Pi, people wanted my opinion on the Haifa Berry DAC Plus Pro. And now I have reviewed the Audiophonics DAC iSabre DA converter, they wanted me to review the Audiophonics Digi Pi Plus SP Diff board for the Raspberry Pi. But let's give it a twist and go for the Audiophonics Rasp Digi LTE Hi Fi streamer. It's an elegant aluminium housing measuring 10 by 17 by 6 cm. On the front there's a push button with a light indicator and on the rear there are a, con a network connector, four USB 2 ports, a 5V DC power input and two SPDIF outputs, one on RCA and one on BNC. The four USB ports and the network connector are mounted on the Raspberry Pi 2B that's inside. On top of the Raspberry Pi the i squared s 2 SPDIF board is mounted. This is the Audiophonics DigiPi Plus I2S digital interface. Since this board normally has the RCA on one side, like the HiFi Berry Digi Plus, the RCA connector is removed from the board and RCA and BNC connectors are mounted on the rear of the cabinet. Four short wires connect the PCB to the connectors. Furthermore, a special power control board is added that offers ATX like behavior. This means that you can switch off the unit by pressing the button on the front. The Raspberry Pi will nicely switch down after it has ended all software actions. Remember, this source like Volumio need to write the state of the program to be able to resume where you left off. Simply pulling the power plug might cause broken files and thus starter problems. You could of course also shut down the Raspberry Pi over the software controller on smartphone or tablet to prevent this. The nice thing is that Audiophonics offers a ready to use solution. You can order the unit ready to use and order it with Volumio, Open ELEC, Pi Core Player or RAS BMC already installed. The same housing can also be ordered with the Audiophonics DAC iSabre version 3 that I reviewed a few weeks ago. See the link in the top right corner. There also is a housing with a small two line display on the front that can be ordered with either of the two boards. Since the computer, smartphone or tablet used for remote control already indicates what is played, I, I find little need for a display. My review sample came with Volumio installed but without a power supply. So I use the S-Boost the best of two worlds 5V 1.5A power supply. I am still looking for a power supply in between the very nice S-Booster and the El Cheapo switching power supply that is normally used with the Raspberry Pis. Another thing that I noticed with the Hi-Fi Berry Digi Plus is that connecting the power supply directly to the Digi Plus board instead of the Raspberry Pi gave a clear improvement in sound quality that needed a print header to be soldered on the print. The Audiophonics DAC iSabre version 3.0 came with a power connector on the PCB but the Digi Pi Plus doesn't. According to Audiophonics this is not necessary but if I wanted I could of course solder the power supply directly to the board. Well, let's see. As always, skip to the timecode above if you are not interested in the tech. The power comes over the GPIO connector to a section that cleans up the power while the I2S signal that also comes over the GPIO connector was fed to the Walsam WM8804G digital interface transceiver with PPL. This chip also detects Dolby and DTS signals. In this audio setup that's hardly relevant but if you want to use the board for video and thus in another housing, this is good to know. A more or less standard clock oscillator is used to keep the pace. The output of the Walsam chip is fed to a pulse transformer 
that is specially developed for galvanic separation of SPDIF signals. I have measured the jitter only to find that, within the restraints of the J-test I used, the DigiPi performed equally to the DigiPlus. I will dissolve from one to the other and back, but don't blink your eyes or you might miss the difference. Also when I put them next together, you see no real difference. I have hooked up the Audiophonics to my Chord DAX and to the new MyTech Brooklyn DAC that was here for review. The first day the Audiophonics DigiPi Plus sounded less refined than the Hi-Fi Berry Digi Plus Transformer version. That's to be expected though, the Hi-Fi Berry was playing for weeks and thus has a well settled clock oscillator while the Audiophonics obviously needed time to settle. It took only one day to do so, after which there was no audible difference between the Hi-Fi Berry Digi Plus Transformer and the Audiophonics Digi Pi Plus, regardless the DA converter used. No surprise since we have also seen that in the measurements. This review is more or less about two products the Rasp Digi LTE Hi-Fi streamer and the Digi Pi Plus SPDIF board for the Raspberry Pi. The latter is a part of the first and it is also good to know that all parts are sold separate as well. The Rasp Digi is a very attractive package that is ready to use. Distros like Volumio and PiCore Player currently offer updates from within the setup, just like any other computer or consumer device. Just open a browser and type for instance volumio.local and you can change the settings and update. So when you buy the Rasp Digi Hi-Fi streamer, you almost buy a normal consumer electronics device and not a DIY computer product. I keep searching for affordable linear power supplies and suggestions are welcomed, to be attractive for lower markets as well. For my set 1, where I have used the modified Hi-Fi Berry Digi Plus Transformer version up till now, the Rasp Digi LTE Hi-Fi streamer not only looks a lot more attractive, it also works equally well without the need for DIYing. I have used the supplied Volumio distro and now play with the PiCore player driven by the fantastic Rune software. If you want to buy your own setup, the DigiPi Plus is slightly cheaper than the Hi-Fi Berry Digi Plus Transformer version but the Hi-Fi Berry comes with the mounting materials as where with the Audiophonics that has to be ordered separately. So price is no discerning factor. The fact that the DigiPi Plus sounds excellent without modifying the power input might count for many. But whatever decision you make, the sound is very good provided you use a power supply that matches your stereo in quality. It is also good to know that Audiophonics offers a very large program of Raspberry Pi accessories, like an extender from the micro SD card on the PCB to an SD card slot to make the card accessible from the outside of the housing. If you are new to using the Raspberry Pi for audio, you might also have a look at my Raspberry Pi for audio playlist. The link is in the top right corner. And as always, if you want to stay informed, Follow my Facebook or Google Plus page or my Twitter account. You can also post questions there, but please view my questions video first. See the link in the top right corner. You'll find more information below this video on YouTube. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends on the web about it. I am Hans Beekhuizen for the HB channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, Enjoy the music.